Hi everybody, it's Karen McCullough back with Lessons from the Road. This was an easy week for me because I had to work here in my hometown of Houston working for my favorite client. I've worked with them for about five years and right now they feel like they are going through the most tremendous changes and they wanted me to come in and just talk to everyone in the company and the managers about change. Today I'm going to bust some myths about change. The first myth is that crisis, when a crisis happens, we change. It starts the change process. If it's in your company and you're having major crisis right now, everybody gets together, they're all gun ho And then it's interesting how after a year or two, people drift away and those changes seem to go away. We're going to scare you into changing, right? How many of you have kids, right? And you've scared them and they've changed, right? What we found is fear doesn't work at all. People aren't even, they don't even change a little bit. We can't scare them. The third myth is, well, let's just tell everybody the facts, right? If you know the facts, you're going to just change. Well, look at, look at Americans. Look at how chubby we've gotten. We have all the facts about diabetes and about our health, but we pretty much do what we want to anyway. So the facts don't work. And how about this one? We're just going to change gradually. How many of you were with a company that did gradual change? You know, first month we're going to do plan A, then we're going to do plan B, then plan C. What happens when you go into gradual change is that people start to get kind of frustrated, a little negative. So by week number three, people are going, ugh, here goes more changes again. Quick change is much better. Change fast. And the last one is, man, I'm too old to change. Yeah, some of you uh, are ready to retire. Some of you are still working, but you've already mentally retired. Listen, you're gonna live longer. So what you've gotta do is realize that you may be living another 10, 20, 30 years after you retire. You need to be open to change. You need to be open to what is going on right now. If crisis don't help us to change, if we can't change because we're scared, if the facts won't change us, if gradual change doesn't work, what does work? Well, there's this process. It's a three-step process. It's called relate, Repeat, reframe. So the number one is relate. First, you have to sell yourself on the change. You have to believe that if you make this change, your life will be better. If you make this change with your company, you're going to be more profitable. You're going to be more productive. You have to buy in. So the first part of it is really getting the facts, understanding and saying, yeah, I want to change. The second part is the repeat part. You have to now bring in rituals. You have to begin to put these changes into some sort of a process and you have to do them every day. If you decide that you're going to read to your kids every night because you know that's going to help them in school, then you've got to do it every night. But you have to put this into your life as a ritual. The third piece is what we forget and that's the reframe. In reframing, you have to live your life as if you've already made the change. You have to live your life that you always read to your kids, that you always eat healthy foods because you're a thin person already. That last piece for me has always been the piece I've left out. I've been on a diet for 30 years. I've been on a diet and off the diet because as soon as I get off the diet, woohoo! I think about going back and eating the way I used to eat. I think that what I have forgotten was to think like a thin person. A thin person doesn't eat that whole piece of pie. They just take a taste of it for the rest of your life. So this is Karen McCullough talking about the myths of change. And I hope I've helped you understand that relate, repeat, and refrain is the way that we put changes into our lives. Thank you, and I'll see you again.